Hey everybody, my name is Wes. Uh, a lot of people know me as Transcend Existence on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. But this is my rig. Come on in. All right, everybody, here we are at the front of my bus. Uh, this is, of course, where I sit driving down the road. And I'm an artist, I do all kinds of uh, cool artwork and whatnot. Uh, I like a lot of post-apocalyptic type styled stuff and uh, found object type artwork and stuff like that. I just like repurposing and reusing, you know, different things I find uh, in my travels. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that I've created here is the steering wheel. Um, many of you have seen this bus before back in the day or whatever and know I put that up uh, on my Instagram and whatnot. So it's been a pretty cool feature. That little guy is a... Uh, a uh, baboon skull that I've had for like 18 years and I had no idea what I was doing with it. I've just been a collector of skulls of, of all types. And uh, the new Mad Max movie came out, you know, I don't know what, three, four years ago or whatever it was, Fury Road. And I instantly knew what I was going to do with that baboon skull. So that's what I've created over there. Yeah, so pretty much that's the front of the bus. Just created some nice little cabinetry and storage areas up in the front up here. Yeah, I keep a lot of plants. I think uh, greenery really makes the space feel cozy and nice, especially with all the wood that I've got in this build. Um, so now we're back in the living area pretty much. Uh, got a couch over here, just chill, watching movies and everything. My workspace over here, um, I do artwork and just working on the computer, eating breakfast, whatever. That's just an all-purpose little zone over here. Um, I like to create music every now and then, so I've got some uh, studio speakers in here that are really nice sound really good just use like garage band and uh you know hook up a mic and play didgeridoo and drums and a lot of electronic stuff and whatever so that's always fun got a wood burning stove over here this is actually for a uh, 1200 square foot home so it can get a little warm in here if i feed it too much so <laughs> i've been pretty uh I've, I've gotten used to how how much to feed that thing and usually once i get a good fire going maybe about every hour or two go ahead and throw another log in you know and it'll stay nice and cozy in here and it it's big enough where it holds a nice coal in here all night long and keeps uh the interior nice and nice and warm um this is a little kind of a cabinet that i built for it so this opens up and this turn this is where i keep all my wood storage i'm about out at the moment got two little pieces in there and then uh down here i've got uh just uh, kindling and cardboard and you know just fire starting type stuff is what I keep under there. It's kind of a cool little piece over here. This this is a you know you call it a shrine or an altar. I'm not sure what you want to put, but there's so many things in here that I've had throughout my childhood and things I've collected on the road as well or or just cool cool friends or whatever given to me. So this is a place that has a lot of meaning and and purpose for me. Um, yeah, just love having this in here. Over here, I've got uh, some more of my, this is what I would call my found object artwork. And this kind of remind me, this is an old vacuum cleaner body actually, uh, from the 1940s. And it kind of reminded me of a Papua New Guinea spirit mask, which I, I love, you know, the Papua New Guinea, you know, culture and whatnot. I, I really think it's really cool. Um, so I went ahead and made like a post-apocalyptic Papua New Guinea spirit mask out of that. and. Uh, just out a lot of found objects, you know, some bicycle parts and a rector set from back in the day, motorcycle chains and just stuff, you know, some hemp for the, the hair or whatever you, whatever you would want to call that. In this cabinet right below there, I've got a little shoe cubby here and then I do a lot of artwork and stuff. So I've got a, a lot of just art supplies in here, uh, you know, just all kinds of cool stuff. I do a lot of clay sculpture, um, airbrushing, pinstriping. Um, I do silicone mold making and create you know different pieces of art all right so we're moving back just a little bit further uh talk about the cabinets and whatnot that i did in here i have a friend randy he's got a, a wood shop so he helped me build a lot of the uh cabinetry in here and uh, helped me install it and, and whatnot but uh yeah I, I wanted upper cabinets i did a roof raise on this bus um did 20 inches on this one it was a, it was a shorter bus so i went ahead and went 20. Um, I think I got like seven foot seven height. I'm not, I don't recall for sure. But anyway, it's this tall and, <laughs> and it's been working out great. And what that does, I, I don't necessarily need a roof raise. I could have fit in here, no problem. But it really makes the, the feel in here really feel much more open. And uh, you can 
have upper cabinets up here for extra storage of stuff. And I only went out about 12 inches on those. I didn't want them to come too far out to feel like it's really creeping in your space uh, to keep that wide open feel. And I, as, you, as you'll see here before too long, I didn't put any walls straight up to the ceiling in here either. So I wanted, as soon as you walked in the front door to be able to see clear to the back to keep that feel really open. And so on my cabinet here, I put a bookshelf here on this side and Right here is, is an example of some of my sculpture work. These were actually real, or these weren't, but I took a real cat skull and I just kind of re-sculpted it a little bit and then made a, a silicone mold out of it and pour them in a urethane resin and then airbrush them and make them look as realistic as possible. So it's kind of an example of them. And I thought these would look kind of cool, just like a floating shelf with just two little skulls on each side, just kind of holding it up there. So back when I was in high school, I had an uncle that used to travel a lot and he would travel all over the world and he'd come back at Thanksgiving and Christmas and whatnot and I'd meet up with him. And I loved to hear his stories. Uh, he was a scuba diver. I, I loved the ocean. I loved the underwater world. And when I was in high school, I kind of made an, kind of an agreement that I wanted to go live on St. Thomas, Virgin Islands with him. I started saving some money. Graduated high school and all that good stuff. Uh, when I was 20 years old, I had a, a kid. So that kind of put a halt to my, my dreams of travel in a sense. I had responsibilities at that point. So ended up getting married, had another boy. So we, I've got two boys and uh, ended up kind of doing my, my whole responsibilities, raising them, enjoying life, just kind of doing my thing. Um, as they started getting through high school and stuff, I kind of knew I wanted to do something a little different with my life again. So I kind of reverted back to high school and I've become a kid again in a sense. And so basically I built this little rolling clubhouse. Um, I kind of honestly was looking at maybe doing shipping container home. That kind of turned into a tiny home type situation. Um, and back in 2012, not too many people were doing these school buses or anything, and I really had no idea, but a friend of mine had a school bus at his house. He used it for a storage shed for a bunch of mechanic tools and stuff like that. And I was talking to him about it, and he's like, Wes, why don't you just build a school bus? And I was like, that's not a bad idea. Back then, not, like I say, I didn't even really know of this world, and I had nobody to talk to about what kind of bus to buy or anything like that. So. Basically, I found a bus, basically the first one I saw, and I bought it. Uh, I would have changed some things up, of course, if I had the opportunity back then or if I knew more. <clears throat> but, you know, I've, I've, I built the thing out. It's been great. I've been traveling for five years and uh, it hadn't let me down, you know, hardly at all. You know, there's little breakdowns here and there, but that's just going to happen. Maintenance on a home happens as well, so I just kind of consider it maintenance. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the, the way I... I started wanting to live this lifestyle it was actually through a lot of inspiration of my uncle traveling when I was younger. All right, so we're in the kitchen area now. This is where the food happens. I love to cook. I love to cook on cast iron. Uh, I got a three burner stove in here with an oven. It's good for uh, frozen pizzas. That's about it. <laughs> actually you can do more you just got to be careful uh that darn gas burner will will just burn the center of stuff unless you preheat really well so there's adjustments to be made when you're working or, or when you're living in small spaces and uh doing this kind of a lifestyle for sure that, that you'll find out um this is all black walnut <clears throat> a friend of mine actually harvested this tree out of the one of the rivers, uh, Nenescaw River in Kansas. And don't quote me for sure, but I think it was about 25 to 27 years ago when he harvested this out of the river. Um, they slabbed it out right on the bank there and it went up in his dad's barn attic for that whole time. When I got it, it was 23 years old. So it must be closer to 27, 28 years old now. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he gave me all this stuff. It's a nice live edge black walnut. It's air dried up in the barn. So it retained that really nice, rich brown look. Uh, the kiln dried stuff grays out quite a bit. So super stoked to, to have this wood for my counters. Uh, got a sink on this side. 
Just regular faucet with a little spray. You know, it's got a spray nozzle and whatnot on it. I have a 100 gallon tank um, underneath my bed. So this is my bed platform. <clears throat> and underneath my bed platform, I have 100 gallons of water, fresh water. My water pump's under there. My whole solar setup's under there. Uh, all my batteries, I've got AGM batteries. Um, and then I've got uh, a toolbox back there as well. So I've got all my toolbox. And the reason my bed is pretty tall is because my toolbox kind of dictated the height that everything was going to be. Um, me being a mechanic and, you know, an artist and whatever, you know, all the things that I do, I definitely needed to have my tools. Um, I work on my bus pretty much by myself mostly. Um, I've definitely had some breakdowns on the road and I'm very grateful that I've got the skills and talent to get them fixed while on the road and have the tooling on board to be able to do that as well. I've got uh, 1920 watts of solar on the roof. 6,000 watt inverter that puts out 110 and 220. I've got a mini split unit. It's a Mitsubishi and I run my, my mini split off of 220. It's just a little more efficient. The refrigerator here is by a company called Eco Solar Cool and it runs specifically on either 12 or 24 volts only. Uh, no gas, you know, no propane or, or AC power. You know, it's just strictly DC. And I've got it hooked up uh, to 24 volts. I've got a 24 volt set up here. So I've got it working on 24 volts. So that's a little more efficient than the 12 volt. So we're back in the hallway bedroom area at the moment. And this is my bed. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is my little snap on toolbox here. And it kind of dictated the height of my bed. So I've got all the tools, everything I could ever imagine. You know, if I break down on the road or whatever, um, in here and plus I've got a lot of tooling on my under storage as well. Um, I also, I don't know if I ever showed this, but this, this bed flips up like this and I framed it out with two by fours. So there's actually a bunch of storage underneath this bed as well under here. Um, I just usually have winter blank or winter, winter clothes and blankets and stuff like that in there and just kind of swap the clothes out with summer and winter or whatever. It's a great, just kind of little hideaway. This over here is probably the latest thing that I finished on the bus. Um, this was just a bare wall for a long time. So I finally got this piece uh, done. And basically it's just a storage wall. It's only about six inches deep from the wall, but it offers so much space because it's a, a giant wall for tons of storage. So these are some pieces of art that I've had. Uh, these open up, there's shelves in here uh, just for storing stuff. These are a couple pieces of art I had when I had my home that I just couldn't get rid of and I wanted to find a place and a purpose for them in the bus. So this was the coolest little thing I, I could do with them that I could think. Um, but like I say, just tons of storage in these things. Um, I incorporated school lockers up in my front and I, I knew I wanted to put them back here just to kind of carry that theme a little bit back in this area. So I kept two more lockers uh, from the lockers and once I finally got to getting the section done. I went ahead and installed these little locker doors in here. But yeah, they're just little gym lockers. Let out the uh, nasty teenage smelly underwear and armpit stuff, you know? Um, but yeah, it's a school bus and I thought it'd be kind of cool to have some school lockers in here as well. So kind of living this lifestyle in this bus has been really great for me. I've, I come from a background of, uh, I'm, I'm a hot rod builder, built some really high-end hot rods for people. So I had a lot of talent and metalwork skills for doing that sort of thing. I've also worked in the aircraft industry and built I, hundreds of airplanes as well. Um, Wichita, Kansas is the air capital of, of the United States basically. So we have pretty much every airplane manufacturer in there. So that's kind of the, the main source of income for most Wichitans anyway. Um, yeah, so I do a lot of sheet metal fabrication on these buses. I do roof raises, uh, you know, roof decks, rear decks, you know, under storage, just about anything. Um, and that's kind of the way I make my money. I've traveled for the last, actually I've been sitting still in Wichita for about a year now anyway. But before then I was out on the road for about three years doing roof raises and metal fab for people, um, just on location for them. And that's kind of the way I afforded to travel and make some money. So for the last year or so, I partnered with Chris and Chris and I have been doing some stuff together for quite a few years, but we actually started a shop in Wichita, Kansas, and that's where we're doing work now.
right, so we're back here in the bathroom area now. Yeah, I've got a nature's head composting toilet back here. Um, it's been really great. I really love it. I know a lot of people divert their, their pee side into a, a larger container somewhere, but for me, I visually like to see where I'm at all the time because out of sight, out of mind scenarios happen too often and I don't like to overflow this stuff. <laughs> So I like to just see it here and it's super easy once a week or whatever it takes, you know, just take it out and dump it. You know, it's no big deal. I've got a, uh, a little fiberglass tub. This tub was pulled out of a, in a 1984 Winnebago, um, just kind of repurposed it. It was a super heavy duty, really thick fiberglass tub. A lot of them are pretty thin plastic and crack and break pretty easily, but this one was worth, worth, uh, reusing. So I put that in and then, uh, my ex-girlfriend Delilah, um, as a lot of you know that have followed my, my channel, have uh, seen her on there. And she, this was a, one of her big projects she did here. Uh, her name's Delilah. And she wanted to put a really cool mosaic in here. So we actually found every one of these tiles and the, the boards behind it and all this stuff. We found it on a dumpster and uh, we just kind of loved looking around for you know, things we could reuse and repurpose. So this was all free, basically, just, just a lot of labor to get it done. So it turned out real cool. I should put little waves and spirals and whatnot in there, little sun sunbeams kind of coming down, you know, across it all. I've got a uh, Moen. Uh, this is a Nebbia 2 shower head. <clears throat> and uh, I installed that a couple years ago. It was a partnership we had um, with Moen. And uh, Went ahead and put it in there a couple years ago and I really like it. It's got just really fine droplets. It reduces water consumption big time and uh, it's been great having it in here. And it's just kind of a nice fine mist that falls across you. All right, so we're at the very back of the bus now. Uh, this is basically my restroom is right here in front of me. Um, this is basically my closet spaces. So I've got one closet on this side and one closet on this side. I was gonna do built-ins with all my dovetail joints and just do built-in you know, drawers and everything back here, but I was really getting fed up with all the work that it took to get this bus done. <laughs> and uh, I did it a little simpler method. I was just ready to get on the road. So I just put some big doors here, put some holes in here. And basically what I've done in here is just put some plastic totes. Um, got them up. We got a cat in there too. What are you doing, Nala? Huh? What you doing, girl? <laughs> so... You just chilling in there? Oh, you want back? All right. Oh, you want up there? Okay. <laughs> so I've got a seven gallon water heater in there as well. So with the new shower head that I put in here, it slowed the flow so much that as the water was flowing through my tankless heater, it would sense an overheating condition and shut the burner off. So you'd be really nice washing yourself and all of a sudden you'd get cold water. So I had to change that out and put a tanked heater in here for that system and, it, and it's worked out really well. Um, so I've got some people that always ask, you know, what does transcend existence mean? And it's kind of a, a double standard, I guess, in a sense, because no matter what we do, we can never transcend existence. We will always exist. You can't go past existing. You're always here. You're going to exist. Um, so that, that's kind of the first aspect of that. The, the second aspect of that is rather than just existing in the world, transcend that and do something really cool with your life. Uh, just don't live for the sake of living, you know, transcend that and, and go into actually existing and really doing something really cool with your life. Do something different. As my logo says, it, this is a, just a quick uh, example, but this is a, a coaster, but transcend existence, reach beyond normality. And so I think that's what we need in life is people to just do things that are different and out of the norm than most people. And that's how we actually improve ourselves and grow and find new ways of doing things. So it's, it's the human evolution. So that's kind of for me what transcend existence means. So I guess this is coming to the end. So uh, thank you so much guys for watching and supporting everything I've done in the past. Um, again, if you guys are looking for a roof raise or any kind of metal fab work, please reach out. Um, hit me up on uh, Instagram is probably the best way. Um, I'm, I'm on that more often than not. 
uh, with the other platforms. I've got Facebook and YouTube as well, but Instagram's probably the best way to hit, hit me up at uh, Transcend Existence. Um, yeah, just leave me a message and I'll get back with you and we'll, we'll uh, try to schedule an appointment and get a phone call and figure out what you want. Get it taken care of, but yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for the tour. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you.